For as long as I can remember, I have wanted to be a full-time artist, and I'm sure most of you are exactly the same. Today, I'm talking to professional wildlife artist Amber Tilsley about her journey to becoming an artist. Make sure you stick around for the full video, because we're going to share with you some of our best tips to help you on your journey to becoming a professional artist. So Amber, could you just give us a little bit of an introduction to yourself, like how long have you been painting for? I've been painting professionally for just over six years now. It started out as being something that I did whilst I looked for another job when I graduated from university. I started doing local art fairs, dog shows and advertising pet portraits and it just gradually grew to, to being something that I could pursue full time. When did you decide you wanted to be a full time artist? I mean, I've always wanted to be a full-time artist, but when you go to school, you do your careers, advisor lessons and things like that. It's not really presented to you as a realistic option. I went to university, I did an English degree. I felt like I would be missing an opportunity if I didn't at least try to do what I loved full-time. So that's why I started offering the pet portraits and doing these little local art shows, just to give myself a chance. Luckily, it did grow and grow from there. But yeah, it's always something I wanted to do, but... It's only really like the last couple of years, would you say, that it's really taken off, or...? Um, it took a couple of like, slow years. I would say the first couple of years, it wasn't at the level that I wanted to be at. It did build to that kind of level, like the David Shepherd Wildlife Arts of the Year competition helped reach more clients like that, doing more art exhibitions with the Association of Animal Artists as well. Social media has been like a huge player as well, Instagram, Facebook, they're helping reach more customers overseas. Probably about half of my artwork goes abroad now. Oh good, I mean the video that we're doing right now, so the tiger that you're seeing Amma paint is also a commission and that's an international commission, so it's going to Singapore? Yes, that's right. Yeah, Singapore. Yeah, just hope you enjoy that process. Do you think you've got something that really sort of stepped up your professional artist game. Was there a clear thing that made you go from amateur artist, just sort of trying it out, to yes, I am now a professional artist? I think it was a very gradual process of just really developing my style, developing my skills within a medium, but I also first had to experiment with lots of different mediums and lots of different things to focus and hone in on what I really wanted to do. Now I stick to quite a lot of like dark backgrounds, I focus a lot on light. Quite a wide variety of subjects but like big cats and primates in particular. I think it's got to a point now where you can hopefully recognise a painting that's mine. Which you definitely couldn't do in the first like couple of years because I was trying so many different things but I think that was crucial really in finding out what exactly how and what I wanted to paint. So you, you spent a bit of time sort of practicing your skill, didn't you? And then I like I hope you don't mind me saying, but I think you you are one of the best wildlife artists out there at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I might be, a, <laughs> might, might be a bit biased. Let the viewers decide. So yeah, make sure to leave a comment if you've seen Amber's wildlife art and if you think she's one of the greatest wildlife artists of the current generation. <laughs> oh. Obviously. It's been a long journey and it's been challenging over the last sort of six years. What are some of these obstacles that you've faced over this journey? Is there anything in particular that stands out as being the most difficult thing you've had to overcome? Like, luckily, like my family and friends have been really supportive, but they did take a bit of convincing. They were a little bit concerned when I said that I wanted to do this full time. Just because it is a risky path to go down. You haven't got that set income and that job security. There is a little bit of a stigma that it's not a proper job and yeah, things we've like that. But uh, yeah, but um, <laughs> thankfully that hasn't come from anyone very close to me. Like they have, they have really supported me. Maybe from outsiders. Perspective, a little, yeah. yeah. It, uh, it doesn't seem like a proper job. Just because you can choose your own hours doesn't mean it's not a proper job. Just because you're not being employed by someone doesn't mean it's not a real career. And I think it's hard for people that are in that nine to five job working with someone to understand and comprehend how much work you're actually doing as a full-time artist. You're not just sitting in your room and painting all day and like getting up late. It, it's a strict schedule that you have to follow. And I mean, I know your family as a whole <laughs> are pretty motivated people and you all get up early, you all go to bed early and you've got one of the best work ethics that I'm hoping is rubbing off on me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yeah, like I've, I've always got quite a strict schedule. I know exactly where I want to be by the end of the day and I know exactly what I want to do. So yeah, especially when you've got commission work and you need to be able to give deadlines and timescales for things. I think that's really important that you can really be disciplined and plan your day well. How did you find growing your audience and like getting your artwork out there to people? Was that a struggle? It has just developed like quite gradually and organically really like through Instagram and things like that and also through the exhibitions. You've just got to take every opportunity you can get. So I was looking for like local art exhibitions, also the, like the international ones, the bigger you know, exhibitions at the Mal Gallery. It's like you've just got to put yourself forward and put yourself out there and every opportunity just take it even if it is just like smaller art fairs like I did the dog shows cat shows horse shows things like that just having my little marquee and trade stand there sometimes you don't get any work and then sometimes you do and like it, you just gotta you've gotta persist yeah really yeah that's, that's the only thing you can do and not lose motivation yeah. and not give up and because like it can be going through a really like slow patch and then the next day you could have like five emails with like commission inquiries and things like that, you can just literally change in a heartbeat. As a professional artist and going back to that transition to becoming a professional artist, because I'm sure a lot of the people that are watching this video right now wanting to aspire to be professional artists and they're probably in their beginning stages. So what was the biggest thing that contributed to you producing professional level work? It was literally just practice. I think there was one turning point painting where I went from not very good and then just made a massive transformation in just one painting which I knew at that point that I wanted to go down the realism route but before then I wasn't really sure what I was aiming for I was just painting and just seeing what came naturally to me once I really got an idea of what I wanted to achieve with that painting then it all seemed to kind of come together y you learned through the painting process yeah I've never studied art or anything like that. Like I did it at GCSE and A level. It's always something that I've just kind of pursued on my own and just seen where it took me. I've never studied art. I mean, I'm not a professional artist properly yet. I'm semi-professional and part-time, but I've never studied art past sort of A level, the same as Amber. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to study art to become a professional artist. It's not a requirement. And sometimes the kind of art that you learn at art schools or like the generic art schools, they're, they're not really the artwork that people are going to be putting up in their homes. It's more like contemporary work, it's more like art with messages and things like that, whereas we're more fine artists and I know a lot of people that started out do start as fine artists and you do not need to go to an art school, you do not need to study underneath somebody or study with somebody to develop the skills that you need to be a full-time artist. It's something that you can do at home by yourself. So speaking of people being at home and starting this journey themselves, have we got any tips that we could share with people that will help them on their journey to becoming a professional artist? I think what helped me initially is just spread the word with your family and friends and you'll be surprised how many people are happy to promote you and support you that way. They will start sharing them and spreading the word and that, that got me work initially. And then it just, the word just gradually spreads. I would say the most crucial thing to becoming a professional artist is take the time to develop your skill. So you were saying that it's been a gradual process, mm -hmm. you've been learning things through every painting. It's just about having the patience and the persistence to just build up and wait until you feel you're at a comfortable level. Don't just start putting together a load of rubbish artwork. Practice, build up your skills, and then start thinking about transitioning into making a career out of it. It is really important to be critical of your own work and try and look at it as objectively as possible and get people's honest opinions. Yeah, so test out your artwork, basically. Get people to come and have a look at your artwork, get them in some local shows once you feel like you're at that point, and study and see what people are doing and reacting to those pieces. Whilst we all hope that people are gonna like what we do, we've gotta get honest opinions. Another really important thing to do once you've built up those skills is decide on a direction that you want to take your art in. Are you trying to get in galleries? Are you trying to get commissions to try and go into teaching or sharing your artwork and your skills that way? Are you trying to get into art fairs? 
Think of all these different routes, and you don't have to limit yourself to one route. You can choose two or three, but don't try and spread yourself too thinly. Learn how to take good photos of your artwork. This is potentially one of the most crucial things for selling. If we've got a website or post it on social media, you want to give the best representation of your painting possible. You don't want any glare, you don't want the colours to be off, you don't want it to be blurry. So invest in things like a tripod. You want even lighting, and that doesn't mean fancy lights. Even lighting can be taken really easily outside on a sunny day, but just make sure your picture is in the shade, and then take those photos using that tripod. The better the photo you can get, the more likely it is that that painting is going to sell because someone's looking at something that's been professionally taken, it's professionally made, fully represents your artwork. Yeah, I think along those similar lines, but just how you present your work is very important. I would think about the framing that you use if you're gonna offer framed artwork. A lot of people like to see the finished products and like to see where it could potentially hang in their homes. There's plenty of websites and apps that you can use that actually superimpose your framed piece onto a background so people can see what it would look like in their living room and things like that. And it just helps to give that sense of professionalism because you can see what that finished piece would look like. It's also a really good idea to set up a website. So not just running through social media, but have a dedicated website that you can sell your artwork from. Make sure all your pictures are good, and make sure all the paintings that you have available are available and ready to see in a professional way. So that, because that is your portfolio. Make sure you've got a bit about yourself because people do like to know a bit about the artist and who they're potentially investing in. Or your contact details, of course. Just make sure that the website has a very clean and professional look and it's easy to navigate. So if you are looking to be a professional artist and it is something that you'd like to try, this is going to cover your face, I'm sorry, check out our previous video which goes through all of the things that you need to do before you start selling your artwork. Hope you enjoy it and thanks for watching.